Comic Gun. Susie Owens. Voodoo. Jacqueline You're watching Comic TV. This week we've got some great comic book stuff for you. This is a special treat, and I'd like you to talk to my friend Steve here. He's been having a little problem this week. Uh, Steve, you want to talk to the audience? Come on, our fans are waiting. What's wrong with you? Don't make a monkey out of yourself. Well, I'm not quite sure what's wrong with Steve. He's been like this for days. I'm not quite sure what happened. I don't know if he went up to the casino and lost all his money or what, but. What we're doing today is we're bringing you a special show. We've got some new Comics TV news, and we're bringing you some of Ratty the Rat's greatest hits. Ratty the Rat is no longer a part of the Comics TV show, and we thought that we'd bring you some of the, some of the best. There's a couple that I couldn't find, um, including the Rat in the Box and the Game Show. But for the most part, we've got all the other Ratty episodes, and it should be a good time. Let's kick off today's show with one of the very first, and may have been the very first, appearance of Ratty the Rat. This was, uh, these all came out in uh, 1996, generally the winter 96, spring, summer 96. That's generally when all these came out. And the first one included Steve and Ratty. And let's go check that one out now. 30 second mini comic review this week. Now, normally Steve would be sitting here with me and I, I do kind of miss him, but um, we've been having a rat problem. You've noticed the past few weeks we've had uh, this rat has been infesting our, our uh, set and we sent Steve down into the sewer to look for him. We set up a new sewer cam to try and catch the rat in action and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get in touch with Steve right now. Steve? Steve, Steve, are you out there? The world is a vampire. Do, 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 do. Nah, 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 nah. Whoa, whoa, Ed, Ed! Ed, the friendly sewer worker. Don't leave home without him. <laughs> Thanks, Ed, you lovely man. What is this place? Isn't that Mike's Spawn Alley? Uh, no. No, it's not. It's mine. It's mine, mine, mine. Wow, look at this stuff. You got a lot of neat stuff down here. Yes, and it's all mine. So get out of here. Shoot. Shoot. You stole this stuff. I didn't steal anything. I collected it. I'm a pack rat. That's what I do. What do you do, psycho boy? Well, we have a comic book show up there. Yeah, I know. I've seen it. Tell you the truth, gives me gas. Hey. Isn't that my Captain America number two over there? I was looking for that last week. No, no, that is mine. I uh, paid for it with my money from my paper route. Well, it looks just like mine. Yeah, but there's a difference. Mine is here. Yours is lost. Boy, I bet you know a lot about comics and stuff. Well, I know enough to snag a Captain America number two when I see one. What? Uh, nothing. Would you be interested about talking and coming on our show and doing little segments about comics and that? <laughs> I got news for you, lover boy. We're on your show right now. Oh, sewer cam. Very observant. Now beat it, will ya? You're stinking up my sewer. Well, now that that's settled, every week we'll come down here and, wait a minute, isn't that my Spider-Man doll? Doll? That's an action figure. Oh, that's it. Ed, Ed, give him the spawn alley. Shoot, fire one. 
Oh, ow, ow, Mike, help, help, help. <laughs> Get out, everybody! Did you just see what happened down there? Where'd you come from? The sewer. You did? Yeah, we were in a sewer camp. You were? You didn't watch it. No. You were too busy with your dictionary. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to have to put the dictionary away. Very well. Welcome back. Wasn't that a great episode? Um, it was It was interesting to see Ratty at uh, some of his best there. A little bit of comic book news. Some disturbing stuff on the comic book front. Kitchen Sink Press, the publisher of alternative comics, artists like Robert Crumb, Charles Burns, and Will Eisner is likely to shut down. It's very important. At this point, which was May 20, uh, May 20th, 1997, we have 10 days left to fight to find a white knight, said company president. President Dennis Kitchen. The investor group that bought a controlling interest in 1994 is refusing to invest new capital, says Kitchen, an erstwhile artist and pioneer of the 60s underground comic revolution who formed the publishing company in 1969. As of Monday, uh, I don't know what day it was, the 22nd, something like that, 18 people had been laid off and 12 remained. It may be down lower than that. A major reason for the slump, says Kitchen, is electronic competition in general. He believes that in CDs, TV, etc., etc. But an email written by an employee of Kitchen Sink sent to various people says that Kitchen Sink's problems could be attributed to some bad luck and some disastrous management level decisions. Some people are saying possibly putting too many eggs in one basket, such as the crow. So that's, uh, that's, that's one bad thing we've got going this week. We'll keep you abreast on that. In the meantime, let's get back to the Ratty of the Rat episodes. The next one we've got is called Cyber Vermin 2000. This was a good one. This included me and Ratty. And basically what it was was Ratty was giving some uh, realistic prices about comics and cards. And this was a funny episode. It was good. So let's check that one out. I was going to do a segment on cards, but Mike took all my cards. And I bet he's down in that sewer with that rat right now. I'm telling you. Okay, Randy, you have an X-Men card. Uh, go fish. Do you have a Captain America? Well, uh, I do. Hey, hey, you know, this is a cool card. This is a Fleer Flare Captain America. I wonder how much this is worth. How much is it worth? Uh, can I just say that? <laughs> well, if I got something for you, Mikey, feast your eyes on the Cyber Vermin 2000. Okay. This is a computer made specially for rats. It can do anything a human computer can do, except it doesn't have a mouse. Hmm. That's me. Uh, okay. So, what is, uh, what is this Fleer Flare from 94 worth? Oh, let me look it up. Here, right here. Fleer Flare, Captain America. That's a buck. All right, cool. Hey, how about, remember those wacky packages? Well, yeah, of course I remember those wacky packages. You are wacky. Mackie packages. Mackie, Mackie packages? Wacky packs. 1968. Ooh, a whole set of 44 goes for 500 bucks. But they're about uh, 10 to $18 separately. Oh, cool. Yeah, hey, cool. Cool. Can, hey, can, can you do comic books in there, too? Yeah, you can do comic books. I can do anything. Well. I'm a... I'm a rat. Okay, rat. Well, comic books. What? Um, how about Amazing Fantasy number fifteen? You know, first. No problem. Amazing Fantasy fifteen. First Spider-Man appearance. That would be whoa, twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand dollars. Is whose prices are those? Who whose prices are they? Uh, you mark those up. Do you have an Amazing Fantasy fifteen? Uh, no. Well, what else do you want to know? Okay, how about uh, Fantastic Four number one? And this for number one, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, $14,000. Okay, Flash Comics number one. I feel like Yolanda Vega. Okay, Yolanda. Do I look like Yolanda Vega? You're close. Flash Comics number one, first appearance of the Flash and Hawkman, forty-five grand. Okay, how about Green Lantern number one? Green Lantern, $10,500. Okay, Green Arrow. $10. Green Hornet. $150. Green Day. The band? Yeah, I know what Green Day is. Stick to the books, the marks. Uh, uh, okay, how about uh, she number one? She. $45. How about he? He. She. Uh, he. Uh, she. Uh, he. Uh, Come on! Okay, how about Star Wars number one? Star Wars. $300. Star Trek number one. 
Three hundred dollars. Same thing. How about Star Trek Deep Space Nine? I'll tell you what. I'll give you three hundred dollars if you don't even mention that trash around here. Okay, Swamp Thing number one. Swamp Thing. Yeah. Seventy-five dollars. How about uh, Man Thing? Man Thing. Fifteen dollars. How about The Thing? Three dollars. Now no more things, okay? I'm done with the things. Okay. No more okay. things. Okay, okay, okay. One more, one more before I go. One more. How about, how about the big one? Dude? Anything at all. Action Comics number one. Ask away. Action what? Comics number one. Action, action, Superman. What, you mean Superman? Yeah, action. Oh, that's the big one. Action. Oh, the big one. Yeah. Oh, that's too big. No, that's too come big on, for this computer. Come on. No, I don't know if the vermin can count that high. Ah, we'll give it a try. Yeah, try. All come right. on. But I'm warning you, if this does not work. Action Comics number one. Ooh, this is a big one. 1938. Uh oh, uh -oh. something wrong right there? Oh. oh, first appearance of Superman. No, no, she can't handle it. She's breaking up. She's breaking up. Oh! Oh, oh, my oh. computer! You uh, blew my computer! Uh, sorry. Look what you did to my computer! Get out of here! You just break everything! You just go around breaking everything! Oh, my computer! 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 Oh, Welcome back again. That was great. Cyber Vermin 2000 and Ready and Mike. Oh, that was so much fun. Mm, let's see. What do we got next? Oh, we've got another one. This was a great one. This was a later one. It's called Wonder Rat Comics. This one was, uh, this was one of the later episodes of Ratty near the end where we didn't use the, the rat studio, the rat stage that we had. And uh, do you have anything to say about this one, Steve? Well, I guess Steve has nothing to say about this one. So anyhow, even though I believe he was in this episode, yes, he was. Let's go check this one out. <coughs> and what would you like, Ratty? Hello, Stevie. Hello. How are you today? Pretty good. Yourself, Ratty? Steve, I got something for you. Okay. I got a deal. What's that? This is a comic book exclusive. Exclusive? Exclusive it's to Comics be, TV. It's got to be hot. And I'm, I'm giving it to you. A real fast book for an exclusive. All for you. Check this out. Look at that. Check this out. Wonder Rat Comics. Very good. Wonder Rat Comics. So what's the, why, why is it so exclusive? This is so exclusive because that's the only one. I just made that. That's my book. Really? My book. Like it? I like it. It's not bad. I, it's pretty. But, but. If this is an exclusive, you yes. gotta. How many of these did you print out? I printed up none. <laughs> none. No, that's it. That's it. I just Why drew that in my sewer none? today. Just drew it. Colored it in with my crayons. It's beautiful, isn't that? Isn't that beautiful? So, Who wouldn't want that? So I want that. Well, but how, I can't have it. How much are you gonna charge for something like this? Two dollars? Three dollars? No, 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 no. It's one of a kind. One of a kind. Yeah. Twenty-four hundred dollars. What kind of a clown would pay twenty-four hundred dollars for this book? Well, it. But there's one right there. Yeah. A, a clown? Yeah. Clowns never pay. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm leaving you, Steve. You owe me a comic you're, book. No, your exclusive is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was fast. Hi. Uh, great episode there with Ratty and Steve. Another funny episode. Let's see. Uh, Andrew M. Ford, down from Falconer, New York. He's been on Comics TV a few times. We were reviewing, or I was reviewing Rib, his very small mini comic, oh, probably about three, four years ago. He's made it up quite, quite the ladder now. He's uh, his first issue of Rib from Caliber Comics came out in May of '97, brand new. Collected the first self-published issue and the second, as of yet, unpublished issue. He had gone through several publishers. I think one issue came out from another publisher. The book's 40 pages, cost $2.95, and was called, oddly enough, Rib Number One. The second issue of Rib will be out this August, with future issues coming out bi-monthly after that. Sounds great. We're going to be talking with that, uh, Andrew, hopefully, in the near future. In the meantime, this was probably one of the funniest episodes of Ratty the Rat. Do you have any idea what this one is? Any idea? No. Well, let me tell you. This had to do with my friend Steve, once again. This is called Steve's Faces. 
This was the many faces of Steve seen throughout Comics TV in the past few years. And actually, they could have added several more because as I was going through some of these tapes, I realized that Steve had several more. So let's, come on, Steve. Let's go take a look at this episode. This was a good episode. Come on, buddy. Come on. Say something. Hiya. 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 Hey, how are you? How you doing there? Hi, Everybody, I'd like to introduce you to the mighty, mighty mystical Mojo. Oh, hello. 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 How you doing, Mojo? Mojo is beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Come down here today to help me uh, unravel a very mysterious it's a mystery. mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It is called The Mystery of the Comics TV Guys. Ooh, I know. scary. First of all, uh, if we can have uh, my friend Ed, the helpful sewer worker, come in here. That's I'd like right. to show you this first. This first, this is the Comics TV logo, all right? This is it's how beautiful. the logo started out. Professional. And when, when this logo beautiful. was being designed, Steve Brisbilla was asked, Steve, are you going to keep this look for any length of time? And he said emphatically, yes, I yes, I will look like this for him. a very long time. And you know what happened next. The very next week, please, Ed, the very next week, he grew a beard. Frightening. Isn't that nice? That's very nice. Oh, I'll stay like this forever, I swear I will. So he grows a beard. Oh, no, does he stop there? No, no, no it gets no. even more disturbing, doesn't it, Mojo? No, when he decides much. to shave his head completely clean. <laughs> Scary. Not a hair left on there, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing. Totally clean. He shaves his head. Egg-like. But, but, does he stop there? No. Does he end the frightening there? No. No. He decides that this is not weird enough. So what does he do? With a little bit of water. Clean. And some, no. And some <laughs> rubbing under the top of his melon, he gets... cha 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 chia hair. <laughs> yes. Yes. Some nice... Bristly brushes grow up there. It's beautiful and fortified with vitamin it's D. It's biodegradable. Sure. Made of carotene <laughs> on his head. Okay, this is bizarre. You're saying this is bizarre? Oh, yeah. Not even close, because the very next week he comes in dressed as Carmen Miranda. Uh, I hope nobody at home is, is eating disturbing. any fruit right I'll now. I'll never eat it again. No, no, especially not this fruit. Carmen Miranda. So he dresses up like like a woman every once in a while. Does that hurt anybody? No, no, no. Uh, but the very next week, to top it all off, he comes in dressed as a big orange dog. I was confused. I was confused. I have no idea what this means. We weren't even sure if it was a costume, were we? We, we tried pulled, to peel it off him, at it. but, it, but it, it stayed and the drool was coming out of the mouth. Mm. What's next? We leave it up to you, Comics TV viewers. Please, help us. What is next for Steve's head? Please, write in. At the end of the show, you'll see an address where you can write in and tell us what Steve's going to do to his head next. Thank you, my friend, my mystical friend, my friend with all the mysticism. Maybe next week, you can enlighten us as to what Mike may do. Well... <laughs> oh, that nutty Steve. That nutty Steve, that nutty rat. Let's go. Let's go on to another one. This one was a good one. This one featured the one and only Bob Wire. Oh, this one was amazing. We did this one somewhere around April 96. It was after a show we had done in Utica, New York. Because I know because I took uh, Bob Wire with us on the trip. Uh, basically, this was a, an interview that Ratty did with Barb Wire. So let's go check this one out. It was very interesting if you never saw it. Hey, here's one, everybody. Today in the sewer, we got none other than movie and television star extraordinaire, Pamela Anderson Lee. Yeah! Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Pamela! Oh, thank you. What's up? What's up? Oh, thank you, Ratty. Thank you. No, thank you for coming to my sewer. Thank you for having me to the scum hole. Thank you for calling it a scum hole. She's very polite. <laughs> what you doing, babe? Uh, don't call me babe. Oh, that's right. Hey, yeah, you got that new movie, Barbed Wire, out there, right? That's right. That's one of the lines that you had to learn from the movie, right? Yes, that was one of the very few lines I learned. I mean, one of the very um, lines I learned, yes. That's natural blonde hair, isn't it? Uh, maybe. Yes, I thought so. So, how's the movie doing? 
Uh, the movie is uh, doing quite well. It's been out for a couple weeks now. It's on video, is it not? Uh, no, that hasn't been released yet. What? But I just, I just bought a video with you. At, oh, 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 well, I just, uh, no, I saw no, something. No, I don't know. I don't know. So, Barb Wire. Yes. Barb Wire, you uh, do your own stunts for this, I guess, didn't you? Uh, I did a couple stunts. You I, did. I learned to shoot a gun. You a did. A big one. Very and nice. And I learned to ride a motorcycle. Well, that's a couple of lovely stunts you had there, Ben. Oh, why, thank you. It certainly is. Thank you. Did you know that the movie that you're in, did you know? Watch this, it's a quiz. Did you know that the movie that you're in was based on a comic book? A comic book? Yes, yeah. that's right. Do you do you read comic books? Uh, okay. Um, is it a trick question? I guess so. Um, do, do you read? Okay, watch my lips. Do you read comic books? Uh, no, not usually. No. Can you, can you read it all? Um, is that a trick question? <laughs> yes, they're all trick questions. Let's just move along, shall we? How's your husband? You were just recently married, right? Not too long ago. How is, how is Stan? I'm a... Stan? Who's Stan? Stan? Stan Lee? Stan Lee? Stan Lee? Who's Aren't you married to Stan Lee? Who's he? Who's Stan Lee? My who's Stan Lee? Tommy. Who's he? Who's Stan Lee? Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee. This is lovely. This is like talking to my chicken. Tommy Lee. He's my husband. Tommy Lee? Yes. From uh, the, the, the famous 80s band, Motley Crue. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting awful tired of this whole interview. Is anybody else getting tired of this? Oh, yes, man. yes, thank you. How about we just close the gate on Pamela? Close it on her old big watch face and everything. Come on, Pamela. Get out, everybody. Get out. Hi there. How did you like Barb Wire? She is some attractive woman, isn't she? That Pamela Anderson Lee, who I think she's, I don't know, is she still Pamela Anderson Lee or Pam yeah. Lee or whatever she is? Yeah. They were kind of on the rocks for a while, but I guess they're doing okay now. That was an interesting episode. Next, in December of 1997, that's right, 1997, economic pressure, pressures will force Aeon and MU Press to close down operations. That's right, that's two comic book companies possibly closing in 1997. Among the titles that will no longer be published by them is those annoying Post Brothers. This does not come as a surprise to creator Matt Hoarth, who does Post Brothers, and he feels no animosity towards them, but he says that, well, not, there's no but. They have kept the comic alive through a time of great strife in the comic book industry. But now he's off to hunt for another publisher, and he's asking for everybody's help to go out, get other people to buy those annoying Post Brothers, get, get your retailer to buy them, get people to buy the copies the retailers buy. So hopefully he'll be, have enough that he can get a new publisher to be attracted to that book. Is it a good book? It's not bad. Personally, Eh, I could take it or leave it. I know Steve likes it. It's pre it's pretty good. It's 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 different. It's been around for a while. Anyhow, the next ep episode we have is called Mad Magazine, and basically what it is is Raddy does a little review of Mad Magazine, gives you a little history about Mad Magazine, and it was an okay issue. Uh, it was no brain burner, barn burner, or anything like that. Yeah, brain burner. That's what this is. But it was no barn burning great. Thing, but it was a ratty episode. So let's take off. Let's go see that one. Oh, look at this place. This place is a... Oh, my chicken! Look at my chicken! Oh, my pretty chicken! Oh, look at... Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Despite all my rage, I am still just a rat in a sewer! It's a dirty, stinking sewer! <coughs> All right, well, I'll be cleaned up with... Get... <laughs> Excuse me, but I am cleaning up the sewer a little bit. As a pack rat, I collect a lot of things, like these, like these cards here. Once I get these cards all packed away, I'll be... Done. All right, here we go. Look at this. Here's, here's one of my mad magazines. This thing is pretty. Maybe some of you guys would like to learn a little bit about Mad Magazine, eh? Huh? Huh? Yeah, I didn't think so. You may be asking yourself, Ready? what does Mad Magazine have to do with comic books? And I would say, quit your whining. Mad Magazine, if you didn't know, was started by a guy by the name of William Gaines. His father, 
is the guy who made the very first comic book. You see the connection. Actually, Mad itself was a comic book in a comic book form. Small, beautiful, happy, cheery, funny. Until it turned into a magazine type thing. <laughs> As it is today. <laughs> These webs are driving me crazy! <laughs> Can we try this again? No. All right. Okay. Back to mad. Mad. Mad, I tell you. Ah! <laughs> mad magazine. Okay. You guys don't think it has anything to do with comic books, do you? Well, you're wrong. And that book down there will show you just how wrong you are. And there's a lot of other books that you can look up and they're here and read more things about mad uh, that you can get from a comic book store or even from a public library. <laughs> I love this stuff. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I know you comic book guys don't really like this humor stuff, but uh, hey, try it. Go on, go on and get mad. But don't just get mad, get even. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night now, bye-bye. And that was the Mad Magazine episode. And that was an earlier one that was probably from like, I would gather spring 96, somewhere in that area maybe even a little before that, that was one of the early issues or episodes when we were using the, the ready set. Basically what's happened is uh, Bill Jankowski, who was the master puppeteer of Ratty the Rat, um, has gone on and he's, he's kind of tied up in his life doing, you know, real work and there's no time for Ratty any longer. So we've pretty much retired Ratty. Have no fear though, this summer, if all goes well, we're going to be working on some brand new skits with some brand new puppets to make you laugh. So, let's take you out. We're going to end the show with our Ready Halloween special. This was from 1996. It was October. This was probably the last episode by Ready. Some other episodes that we did do, we did, Ready did an interview with Jeff Smith who is the owner of the local Flight Into Fantasy, I believe, Flight Into Fantasy, Flight of Fantasy, something like that. Local comic book chain, there's a couple stores. And he also did an inter interview with Ken Lashley at Ken's house in Burlington, Ontario, and that was like in August, I believe. And like I said, there was the game show, which was one of the funniest, where that encompassed the entire, the entire episode of Comics TV, and I don't know where it is, I can't find that one. And also the Rat in the Box, where Steve was um, digging through a box of comics and found Ratty, and it was pretty funny. I can't find that one either. So we're going to end the show with the October 96 Ratty. So take it away and have a good week. This has been Comics TV. I'm Mike Rizzo, and we'll catch you next time. I know, I don't, I don't like these webs. Who decorated it? You do this? No, I didn't do that. Look at these things, they're horrible. But it looks kind of like your place. They stick on my tail. But it looks like your place. I know, it looks like my place. How you doing, kids? Hello. Me too! It's great! Hey, you kids, guess what? I'm going to tell you guys a scary story for Halloween. You guys want to hear a scary story? Yeah, you guys like scary stories? Okay. Well, this story is all about the scariest thing you have ever seen. He's big. He's ugly. Are you listening? This is all for your benefit, you know. You're going to thank me later on when you have nightmares about this. He's big. He's ugly.